Uh, good afternoon. This is Tony Alonzofame. I'm a Cloud Success Manager in uh, SLSG, State and Local Government. And we're going to be kicking off our State and Local Government Azure Chalk Talk session today. And we're, uh, we're, we're very pleased to have Brian Kobler from Citrix talk about some of the uh, new uh, products that the Citrix has that uh, can provide re remote desktop services for, uh, for customers. So I'll hand it over to Brian. This session is being recorded, so um, let's get started. Thanks. Thanks much, Tony. I appreciate uh, appreciate the introduction and the opportunity to talk to uh, state and local government customers today. <clears throat> so I want to be very clear. There are many, many things that Citrix and Microsoft are doing uh, to deliver Citrix workloads in Azure. I'm going to talk about one specific uh, example of that, and that would be the delivery of, of virtual desktops in Azure using Citrix. So there are um, there are a lot of uh, a lot of things to cover, and I want to make sure that I, I do it right and leave time at the end for questions, which I'm happy happy to do. So the first thing that I would um, would mention is, uh, as, as Tony said, I cover all of our sales activities with Microsoft in North and South America. So every segment and every vertical, not just state and local government. So one advantage of that is I see a broad swath of what our our common joint customers are doing together around Azure, what the interests are, and, and where people are looking to, to drive incremental value out of their technology investments. And that's really what I want to talk with you guys about today. So virtual desktop is a pretty broad term, and it means different things to different people. So in the same way that when you buy a, a car to drive, you know, you make different decisions based on which car or other vehicle to, to select based on what you intend to do with it. So if you're going to haul a bunch of stuff and you want uh, a lot of friends to, to call you up all the time to help them move, you buy a pickup truck. If it, uh, you want something small and sporty to, to get around in, you might buy a Mini Cooper. Um, you know, the point there is what you're going to use to deliver these Windows desktops is going to change based on what you want to do with them. It's not a not a one size fits all kind of a discussion. And so the good news, you know, that the, um, the top line on all of this is Citrix and Microsoft together offer a number of ways to deliver a secure, well-managed virtual desktop at a, at a variety of uh, uh, use cases to meet your business need. So I'm going to just go ahead and dive right into the deck. The first question is, which kind of virtual desktop is right for me? So there are different kinds of virtual desktops, right? There are, if you're familiar with remote desktop services, um, some of you may still call it by its old name, terminal services or terminal server. You're familiar with this. This is a, uh, a way to have a session-based desktop that is really running on a server somewhere. It's also called server-based uh, virtualization, um, which is a different thing from server virtualization. So it's a way of getting a desktop and being able to uh, have full control over that desktop and the things that get installed into it and the control you have. Um, that's one way of doing it. A very special kind of virtualization is a fully virtualized client, which is properly known as VDI, Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. Unfortunately, the term VDI tends to get thrown around to mean any kind of virtual desktop, but it's a very specific kind. And I'm going to talk about all of the options that are available to you and cover off some of the pros and cons of each um, and just a recognition that the kind of desktop virtualization you're going to do and deliver will require some underlying Microsoft licenses. And I'll talk a little bit about that as well. So the most important thing to know is when you're considering delivering virtual desktops in a state and local government uh, account, uh, just an understanding that it's not one size fits all. Your needs um, will largely dictate which of these solutions is right for your particular use case. So some of the challenges, particularly in a state and local government organization, right? Uh, I know that you guys have uh, aging endpoint hardware and probably a mix. I was on a call 
uh, a couple of days ago where the state and local government customer I was talking to literally had almost every flavor of Windows operating system from days gone by, and, you know, their their hardware was uh, getting a little long in the tooth. Budgets are, you know, the last thing they thought of is, is upgrading and modernizing equipment. And the good news about desktop virtualization is it allows you to continue using the hardware that you have, um, but still be able to consume uh, Windows 10 or a, a modern operating system from Microsoft uh, in a very performant way that enables you to standardize and take advantage of some of the security benefits that they've built into that operating system. So uh, I do have a demo uh, in just a little bit. Um, in fact, the, the picture you see on the slide right now is actually of one of my uh, Windows 10 desktops running in Azure. Um, and I will, uh, I'll show you that in a moment. So I mentioned that Citrix and Microsoft together have a range of solutions. So if you're familiar with Citrix, you're probably familiar with Citrix in an on-prem environment where you're managing and, and running everything yourself out of your own data center. Um, we have uh, all of the options that I'm going to talk about can be deployed in Microsoft Azure, and I'll cover in a moment why you might want to consider doing that. But we have a range of offerings, right? So depending on what your objectives are and what is specific to your particular business need, we can probably uh, guide you correctly into the right solution, whether that solution for you is taking a portion of your on-prem environment and extending that to Azure, or uh, selecting a Citrix Cloud Managed Service in Azure that allows Citrix to manage the infrastructure components on your behalf, or whether the right solution for your particular business case is um, accessing a, a Windows 10 desktop via uh, a new offering called Zen Desktop Essentials, which is available in the Azure Marketplace. Uh, same <clears throat> information is on the previous slide, just a slightly different way of looking at it. So there are three main options for uh, consuming a virtual desktop using Citrix in Azure. On the far left, we have an option called Zen Desktop Essentials. It is a way of delivering a Windows 10 VDI desktop, true VDI, a fully virtualized client, on Microsoft Azure. And the benefits there are it's a monthly subscription where you're, in essence, renting the Citrix licenses. Um, you subscribe through the Azure Marketplace. You get aggregated and simplified billing from Microsoft. And it's really designed for a very specific use case, which is you just you want a consistent, um, same-sized VDI desktop delivered to everybody, and you want it quick, fast, and simple. In the middle column, this is appropriate for customers who already have made an investment in Citrix licenses that they would like to leverage and take advantage of. They just want to deploy those licenses in Azure to be able to, to reap some of those benefits. And this allows you to deliver both virtual apps and desktops, um, both on-premise and in Azure, and it's a perpetual license model that if you're going to go down this path, it's probably because you already have some quantity of Citrix licenses that you just want to continue using. You just want to consume them in Azure rather than on-premise. And it's designed for the most customer, uh, most complex customer use cases imaginable. The reason I wanted to highlight virtual app and desktops, if you remember earlier, I talked about remote desktop services. So you can deliver a remote desktop service-based uh, desktop that looks just like the Windows 10 uh, environment you probably have on your home PCs right now. Um, and it's indistinguishable, but it, it uses a different kind of Microsoft licensing. And the advantage, the reason you might want to consider doing that, is it's less expensive. You can put a larger number of users on the same size server, then you can fully virtualize clients. 
So to fully virtualize a client and access it as if it were a physical PC sitting on your desk in front of you, that takes more resources. So you can put fewer users on the same sized server if you're doing actual VDI. So what we find is that many people say, oh, I want to do VDI. And then when you dig into it a little bit, you find out that what they all they really care about is they want a Windows 10 desktop that their users can have full control over, and they uh, they want to be able to consume that Windows 10 desktop maybe on aging hardware or an older Windows operating system that uh, it's just not in the um, it's not in the budget it's not in the planning cycle to be able to upgrade that physical endpoint. This is a way that you can deliver that current Windows technology uh, and extend maybe the life cycle of your existing hardware. If you guys refresh every three years, maybe now you can refresh hardware every four or maybe even five years. And with the cost savings that comes um, from avoiding that hardware refresh, that very often will more than adequately pay for <clears throat> the cost of the virtualization project. Uh, project. I'm going to cover um, the specific licenses required for each of these solutions in just a moment. I saw something in the chat window, and I'll be happy to respond to that in a second. On the far right-hand side is that managed service that I mentioned. So if you are the type of, of organization that says, I get the value of virtualization, I want to deliver a virtual desktop to all of my users, but... I don't have enough IT staff to manage the Citrix environment, or I'm just not interested in managing the Citrix environment myself. I just want to manage my applications and my virtual desktops. Um, this is a service where Citrix can install and provision and patch and update and upgrade your Citrix environment. They'll tune it for you. They'll keep it humming along smoothly um, on your behalf. So specific licenses. Um, actually, I'm going to cover licensing in just one moment. The server-based desktop that I mentioned earlier, so like an RDS service that you're already familiar with, is delivered by something called ZenApp. ZenApp is Citrix technology. It's a third-party add-on that sits on top of an RDS server to make that RDS server do more things than RDS can do natively. And that's why if you're going to deliver a server-based desktop, that requires an RDS cal um, for each of the named users that's going to be using that service. So if you want to deliver a 1,000 server-based Windows 10 desktops in Azure, you would need a 1,000 RDS cals from Microsoft to enable that. That's the underlying uh, license requirement there. On the VDI side that I spoke about a moment ago, there's a very specific um, kind of Windows licensing that you will need, uh, and I'll cover that in about three more slides, so I ask your patience on that one. I have a whole slide dedicated just to that because I know there's considerable interest. Microsoft is pretty excited about the stuff that we've built together jointly. And uh, Margaret Arakawa is the general manager for Windows 10 and devices at Microsoft. And she and her team have been deeply involved on building out these capabilities uh, over the last few years with Citrix. And we're very grateful to her for her vote of confidence here. Why would you want to put a, a Windows 10 desktop on Azure in whatever flavor? You know, what are some advantages? It, it, maybe it's worked well for you on-prem so far. Why would you even consider moving that? Well, one reason, and everything gets back to economics, right? One reason is um, running workloads in an on-prem data center is messy and expensive. Um, and it's only going to get messier and more expensive as uh, top talent, top IT talent, uh, moves from place to place, and I think that many customers are not necessarily looking at, I'm going to move everything to the cloud. Some customers are definitely doing that, but others are saying, I want to be more thoughtful and intentional in my approach, and I want to figure out which workloads would work well in Azure, 
and I want to move them um, not all at once, but over time in more of a phased approach. As I, you know, identify low-hanging fruit, I'm going to move those workloads to Azure, and I'm going to build on that success by identifying additional workloads to move later. So that's really one of the key points of all of this is delivering a Windows 10 desktop in Azure is not an all or nothing thing. You can identify specific use cases that would benefit from it, move those workloads to Azure, and then over time identify others and move them. Some of the main benefits of delivering Windows 10 on Azure, of course, are you can dial up or dial down. So one good example uh, would be if there's an element of seasonality to your business. So um, state income tax, for example, uh, right now is probably the busiest time of year for all of the state uh, income tax offices. Um, and you can dial up the, the capacity or dial them down, add more desktops, spin them up, and when you no longer need them, turn them off. You no longer pay for them. You're not buying perpetual licenses that sit there unused during some portion of the year. You can, you know, adjust the thermostat up or down. And it also helps get you out of the business of managing the endpoints themselves. So you are able to provide access to contractors uh, or interns or, um, you know, even just getting out of the hardware lifecycle management business entirely is a tremendous cost saving. Seventy cents out of every IT dollar goes towards supporting your legacy infrastructure. And this is a way of, of sidestepping that and avoiding those cost savings. Um, the, uh, the reduced capital expense item that I've listed here, you know, that last point in there, extend the hardware refresh. If you're spending, you know, every three years, what most organizations typically do is a third, a third, a third. So each year you're replacing a third of your environment. That's incredibly expensive and time consuming. Get out of that business entirely and provide a virtual desktop that's always up to date, always patched always has the most current functionality available from Microsoft, and it's done in a very secure and well-managed way uh, in Microsoft Azure. And the other advantage there, of course, is you know, security and privacy concerns. If you have a data or physical endpoint, a laptop, a desktop, or whatever, and that device gets lost, um, you know, that's a huge potential data issue to worry about. By delivering your Windows 10 desktops and the applications on them uh, and the data in Azure, it's all securely locked up in a, in a well-managed data center. There's uh, no possibility that through accident or negligence, someone is going to be able to you know, wind up the front page of the Wall Street Journal the next day because they left a device at an airport security stand or something similar. So with Citrix and Microsoft, you can really accelerate uh, your adoption of Windows 10, regardless of which type of Windows 10 virtual desktop is right for your organization. The fact that you can uh, provide a email to your user population that says no matter what version of, of Windows you're on, or even if you're not on Windows, if you're using a Macintosh or a Linux client or a uh, you know, a, a thin client, open the email from IT, click this link, and it takes you into your virtual desktop environment. Um, it's very simple and easy to configure. It can be done full screen to where the end user will really, you know, the technology fades into the background. If you know how to use Windows 10, you know how to use Windows 10 within Citrix. And it looks identical. It feels identical. Your user skill, you know, the skills they may already have for knowing how to get around inside of Windows, it's the same. Your IT support skills, managing the, uh, the Windows environment on-prem, it's identical to managing it in Azure. It's not something that's intended to disrupt your world or require a lot of new skills training to happen. It's the Windows that you're familiar and comfortable with and know how to get around in and, and manage just delivered on someone else's server because that really is one of the key points 
cloud in Azure is just someone else's server running in someone else's data center. It's, it's uh, you know, from a, a how you use the thing standpoint, it doesn't change anything. The big benefits are around secure reduction of cost on the IT side. If anything, your end users will probably notice a, a better experience just by getting onto the most current operating system with all the security enhancements Microsoft has built in. Okay, as promised, here is the licensing piece that enables uh, enables you to deploy a fully virtualized Windows client on Microsoft Azure. So what Microsoft has done in this product terms update is said, if you purchase your Windows Enterprise license per user, and you have active software assurance on those Windows per user licenses, you get a new software assurance benefit. And that software assurance benefit says you may deploy a Windows 10, uh, it's known as uh, CBB, but it, it's current plan for business. So a very specific kind of Windows 10 Enterprise VDI desktop in Azure. Very clear. Um, this is something that is a capability that can be deployed in Azure only, and only if you have a very specific kind uh, of Windows license. So the net net of that is if you have, uh, the way we usually explain it is VDI is probably right for every customer out there, but it's probably not right for every user within that customer. So in your organization that truly have a need for a fully virtualized Windows client, great. Um, just make sure you have the right kind of Windows licenses for them. For everyone else, if you don't have those kinds of Windows licenses and the needs are not as complex, don't really need a fully virtualized Windows 10 client, you can deliver a Windows 10 server-based desktop that looks and feels identical to the VDI client, your end users are not going to notice any difference. Um, and we can do that without requiring these Windows licenses. Instead, those users would require an RDS CAL um, for their Windows 10 desktop. So, okay, so I said VDI is right for every customer, but not right for every user, how do you know when you really do need, um, you know, a VDI desktop, right? So, so examples of, of using why, why Windows 10 and Azure are listed here, specifically for, um, for, we typically see developers, so uh, people that are in uh, software, you know, almost certainly would benefit from a, a true VDI desktop. Um, people that have, uh, I've seen organizations, for example, that have offshoring development uh, in India, in the Philippines, in other parts of the world. This is a great solution for them to give the developers offshore the access they need, but to be able to do it securely through an Azure data center to, re to reduce the, the likelihood of, of information leakage. It gives them the power they need and the control that IT wants. All right, so if you want to deliver Windows desktops on Azure, there are a couple of things to know. This is everything that I've said before, just framed up in a slightly different slide. So there's a Citrix component. There's a Microsoft licensing component. And then there's the Azure component. So this solution, all of these solutions, use your Azure subscription to uh, handle the, the workloads that you are driving through Azure. So you may or may not already own the Citrix licenses that you already need. If you are a current Citrix customer and you have current licenses, then you own the Citrix pieces you already need. If you are a uh, current Windows 10 or Windows 10, uh, Enterprise customer and you have the, the right kind of per user licenses, then you may already own all the Microsoft licenses you need. Um, the Azure piece, so that's kind of a, 
you, you will definitely need the, the Azure subscription to be able to do this because it runs in your Azure subscription so that you have full control and access and management of those workloads. Uh, and you are able to select any supported Azure VM type. Microsoft makes a number of them available to give you choice in terms of capabilities of the Windows uh, desktops in Azure. So they range from very modest at the low end to some gigantic, uh, you know, equivalents of the most powerful graphical CAD CAM workstation uh, machines out there. And you can select any one of those to be your Azure VM type for these desktops. So that when your users get the desktops, they'll, you know, this kind of user will get four gigs of RAM and, you know, um, 500 gigs of storage, or and that user will get, you know, 64 gigs of RAM and, you know, who knows what, a terabyte of storage, or, or whatever the options are that you would select uh, for your Azure VM. And you can deploy those resources in any Azure region on Earth. Now, for state and local government customers, you guys are almost certainly going to deliver your resources all out of uh, you, you won't have a need for a world-spanning deployment of these Windows desktops. And that's okay, um, because the system was really designed to give, to give users choice on where they deploy the resources. If your choice is, is all within your state, fantastic. That's, that's great. So, I mentioned, if you remember, way back to the beginning, three ways you could consume Azure, uh, Citrix and Azure. And one of those ways was an offering through the Azure Marketplace called Zen Desktop Essentials. So the, the natural question is, is Zen Desktop Essentials right for me? So most of what I've talked about uh, for the last half hour has been around the difference between a virtual desktop and a VDI desktop. So the first question is, do you need a virtual desktop? So Zen Desktop Essentials delivers a desktop. It has no ability to deliver a server-based desktop. So if you go that route, you're going to be getting a VDI desktop. And it does require specific Microsoft licenses, so specifically the Windows Enterprise per-user license with software assurance. Session-based virtual desktops can more cost effectively deliver a Windows 10 desktop using SCALs as the underpinning. If you need to deliver both virtual applications and virtual desktops to the same group of users, that's not something you're going to be able to do using Zen Desktop Essentials. It is designed specifically and only to deliver a VDI desktop in Azure you would bake the applications into the VDI image. You can either select a Windows 10 image from the Azure gallery that's been pre-built for you, or you have the ability to upload your own Windows 10 CBB image that has your specific applications baked into the image. You can select whichever one is the right one for you. Uh, if you want to leverage your existing Citrix licenses, and the analogy that I always use here is, let's say you like Breaking Bad, and you like it so much you went out and bought all the Blu-ray, uh, uh, you know, the Blu-ray set for all the seasons. And then you go to Netflix and you say, I'm interested in subscribing to your monthly Netflix service. But I don't want to pay what you're asking for the service. I want a little bit of a discount because, look, I already own Breaking Bad. That's not how a monthly subscription service is designed to work. So if it's important to you to leverage your existing license environment uh, investment, that's not going to come through Zen Desktop Essentials. Uh, can everyone have the same size VDI desktop? You know, does everyone get the same size VDI desktop? You've decided what all of your virtual desktop users need, and everyone has pretty much the same needs. Fantastic. Zen Desktop Essentials might be a good fit. But if you have different groups of users who need differently sized computers, differently sized virtual desktops, 
Essential is probably not the right fit. One of the other offerings from Citrix on Azure will give you more choice and flexibility in that regard. Uh, so, I'm going to move ahead. Uh, Citrix NetScaler is a great thing to include as part of your thinking about delivering Windows 10 desktops in Azure, and I'll tell you why. Um, if you are accessing remotely, you never really know what the network is going to look like, you know, how the Internet connection is at home or, you know, at a remote facility that you're working at that maybe has a, a lower WAN link uh, out to the Internet. And what Netscaler, well, Netscaler does many things, but one of the things that it does is is reduce the impact of poor networks and high latency to give that end user a great experience when they're connected to their virtual desktop or application. And there are a couple of options. If you are already a Netscaler customer, thank you for your business. We appreciate that. You can connect via Express Route uh, back into Azure uh, and have a, an experience that will be indistinguishable for you from having a, a physical Windows 10 desktop on your local endpoint. If you don't have a physical Netscaler in your environment already today, you have the option to subscribe to one called Netscaler VPX uh, through the Azure Marketplace. It does require that you bring your own Netscaler license. And the way to think about that is when you go to the grocery store, because it's time to buy gift cards for someone, and you pick the one you want, until you get to the register, that gift card has no value. It can't do anything. But when you get to the checkout line, you decide how, what dollar amount to put on that gift card. And that's how Netscaler VPX works. We offer many flavors of uh, capacity and capability for Netscaler. And when you subscribe, you activate that VPX with a Netscaler license that corresponds to whatever you need to be able to manage the traffic and throughput in your environment. So one uh, example, I'm not going to dive too deeply, but I did want to mention this. This is a recent blog post that Citrix and Microsoft did together about uh, Netscaler and customers who were thinking of onboarding into Azure as a way of accelerating that and smoothing it out and making it really, really simple to have a great experience when you're connecting your Citrix workloads uh, into Microsoft Azure. I would encourage everyone to have a look at it. You will all have access to the slides um, after the fact. Tony, I'm going to send you the updated deck as soon as I get done presenting. And when you're thinking about, you know, how you're doing things in your IT environment today, these are some things that I would really like you to, when you think about them, you know, it's easy to say, oh, Citrix, I know what they do. Oh, Microsoft, I know what they do. But there are some new capabilities that we've delivered together successfully at a number of other customers, even a number of other Microsoft state and local government customer uh, Tony can certainly speak to some, I can speak to others, um, but when you think about these topics on the left here, that should absolutely get your thinking cap on about how could I, how could I meet those business needs by delivering my Citrix environment in Azure? And I've included some resources on the right hand side, some things for you to get started on, right? That get started with Citrix on Azure link, fantastic link. It does a really good job of explaining uh, far better than I have here, how to get started in very simple recipe format. Do this, do this, do this, and here's what, you know, the souffle is baked on the other end. That Citrix Azure calculator that I've highlighted here in red is a great way for you to say, this is what my Citrix environment looks like today or what I would like it to look like in the future. What is that going to do to my Azure consumption? You know, how much Azure is a given environment likely to, to take? And that helps you really zero in on, on what the, the costs are going to look like for you. And I would encourage you to have a look at that calculator. It's a very well done tool. The more information you can put in about your current or proposed environment, 
the more accurate the number that will come out on the other side. And I wanted to leave uh, about 20 minutes or so for questions. I'm very happy to, to take any questions. Tony, if you had any comments you wanted to make, I know that that um, you and I have worked together on a number of occasions in the teams, and we're very eager to provide the best possible. No, that, that, that's great, Brian. Um, so is Citrix Essentials available today through the Azure Marketplace? I know that, It is uh, indeed. Yes, it is. Okay, great. Any customer can go to uh, the Azure Marketplace right now, search for Citrix, and you will find Zen Desktop Essentials. If you have the right kind of Windows licenses, you can start doing this right now. And that's equally true if you are going to be delivering those Windows 10 desktops, um, not through the Marketplace, but using Citrix Perpetual licenses or Citrix Cloud licenses to deliver those Windows 10 desktops in Azure. The product terms document is what allows you to do this, not a particular SKU. Okay, great. Now, and I believe uh, one, one uh, point of clarification is the uh, the Citrix Essentials is available for uh, Azure Marketplace for commercial Azure, not for government Azure. Is that correct? That is correct. It is currently uh, only on commercial Azure. Uh, Azure Gov is planned for the second half of this year. Uh, any other questions? From the standpoint of trials and such like that for our customers, we just connect with the Citrix counterparts. Um, yeah, that's uh, on that side to get you guys to spin it up, or yeah. So uh, we can actually even make it easier than that. Um, in the chat window, uh, I will be happy to uh, bring up a page, and I'll show you the URL here right now. It's always hard to talk and look at the same time. Totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. All good. So uh, I will paste the URL to this page in the chat window so that everyone has it. But if you go right here, you can set yourself up for a trial right now. You don't have to wait on me or anyone else uh, to be able to do that. Let me awesome. just paste that into the chat window. There. Excellent. Perfect. And I would also encourage people, the, um, one other point that I neglected to mention is uh, there is a minimum user sign-up through Zen Desktop Essentials in the Azure Marketplace. It's 25 users, and it is a monthly subscription. So, you know, the good news there is if you sign up your users and you're trying it out over the course of the month, and during the course of the month you go, gosh, I, I really wish it did X, Y, Z, and Zen Desktop Essentials doesn't do X, Y, or Z, but a different Citrix offering does, your Citrix and Microsoft account team would be happy to have a conversation with you and help get you into the right size solution for what you're trying to do. So the advantage, obviously, of a month-to-month -month subscription is if you try it and find out it doesn't meet your needs, uh, you're not out uh, anything other than the month subscription at the end of that month. Great. Uh, one, one other question, Brian. So the, the Citrix cloud service that you offer, is that on Citrix Azure or is that on the customer's uh, Azure subscription? Great question. Um, every Azure workload no matter how the customer finds their way to Citrix on Azure, always runs in the customer's Azure tenant. So even if you are a Citrix Cloud customer, any of the workloads that you say you want running in Azure will always come out of the customer's Azure tenant. Okay, great, great, thanks. And then one more question. So the, the Essentials desktop and the Essentials uh, you know, apps, so the, you know they don't you can't use them for the same user, but if you have uh, different sets of users, uh, a customer could buy a uh, desktop for one set of for one use case and app for another use case. You absolutely can. 
Absolutely. So user segmentation is key. You hear Citrix people talk about that a lot. And I did promise a demo. I'm going to show you one quick demo. So this is my uh, Windows 10 BDI desktop in Azure. So uh, every Yeah, so it looks like uh, Brian's having some uh, audio challenges. And yes, to answer your question, Brian, we, we can see the audio, uh, the uh, the video. Okay, I don't know what that was. That was weird on audio, but I think you guys got the point. You were still able to see my screen, right? I uh, that is my Windows 10. Uh, Azure desktop that I use on a day-to-day -day basis to get my job done. And you saw how I could make it go full screen. Um, your users will likely not even realize that they're not using an operating system installed on the desktop or laptop right in front of them. It's a way to really make them comfortable with the, the fact that, you know, not so much the technology, but just getting their job done on any device that they choose to access it from on any network, whether from home, from remote location, wherever they can get to the Internet, they can be productive on their well-managed Windows 10 desktop. Okay, great. Great. I just thought of one more question. <laughs> I'm just, just full of them. So uh, <laughs> back, 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 to, back to licensing. So you mentioned that uh, you know um, RDS license cals aren't required if for Citrix Essentials, but if a customer decides to bring their own Citrix licenses to Azure, uh, would, uh -huh. they, would the customer still require RDS cals? If Absolutely. the customer is bringing their Zenapp licenses to Azure to deliver a virtual application or a server-based desktop, then yes, they will absolutely require their RDS CALs uh, to, to do that. If they are delivering a VDI desktop in Azure, uh, within the marketplace or external to the marketplace, they will need that Windows per user license. So VDI, Windows licenses required. Uh, any other kind of virtual desktop or virtual application, RDS CALs required. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah, same old rules. So just uh, from uh, an Azure consumed revenue standpoint, do you have any rough figures on right a, a, a standard desktop th through the VDI and or standard desktop through Zenapp that w would result in a certain, you know, target of Azure consumed revenue per user per month? Any guesstimates on that? Uh, yeah, you know, it's one of those things that, um, you know, I'm reluctant to, to get quoted on because there are some variables. Your mileage may vary, right? Certainly. The Azure VM type you select, the Azure region that that is uh, deployed in, huh. um, you know, we'll, we'll introduce some variability. But I think in general, um, I, I think the way I'm going to answer that is if you look on the Citrix.com slash Microsoft page under Citrix on Azure, you will find uh, information about what a typical uh, consumption would look like for a given range of users. And I think the... the Excellent. I'm looking at is, uh, you know, like 500 users equals roughly this amount of Azure consumption. Okay, because obviously that's both important for uh, a customer conversation and potentially getting them interested to go further as well as right for our unselfish means in quota retirement. So thank you. No, that that, no, that makes, makes sense. 
Scott, I'm very happy to follow up with you offline and, and drill into a little more specifics. No, I think that was good because it, it, you know, that goes to uh, the, the averages that I can also point the customer to, right? So it's not just anecdotal stuff. It's canonized, right. canonized scripture. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for the second hit on on this, sir. My pleasure. Uh, it was a great opportunity to get to talk with you. I'm very grateful for the chance to do so. Um, your Citrix and Microsoft account teams are very eager to, to help out and engage with you and understand the particulars of what you're trying to do and the constraints you're managing to in your organization. So thank you all very much for your time today. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you again, Brian. Uh, have a great weekend. You as well. Bye-bye.